Hi, my name is Bob Hankel. I'm a consulting engineer for Oracle Coherence. And today we're going to talk about Oracle Coherence push replication and some features that we'll be releasing sometime this summer. First of all, we'll talk about what push replication really is, what problems does it solve. We'll take a look at what's happening under the covers and then we'll discuss new ways to enable it. We'll also talk about standard use cases and we'll talk about some interesting new features that we're going to be releasing shortly. What is push replication? Well, it's a framework for synchronizing a cluster over a wide area network. And basically it works by pushing updates done at a source cluster to a destination cluster. It's transparent and it's asynchronous. It solves a lot of problems. Uh, one is disaster recovery. You're worried about your primary cluster, which is uh, potentially could go down, and you need a hot backup someplace in a remote site. It's also very useful for offloading read-only queries and read-only applications. The idea here is what you want to do is you want to take one cluster and dedicate it to read-write applications, and then you move data over to other clusters that do only read-only activity. In essence, what it does provide is local access to global data in a variety of different ways. Now, how does this all work? Well, from the application's point of view, it's really transparent. Uh, basically, it does standard put, get, and remove operations against a coherence cache. And underneath the covers, this is being listened to by push replication infrastructure, specifically a publishing cache store, a push replication provider, and a publishing service. They work together to capture updates that have been done at a source cluster and push it across the wire over to a destination cluster. And the application on the other side just sees the updates happen and appear magically. The simplest case of push replication from a use case perspective is active-passive. It's basically one cluster does read-write applications and all other clusters support read-only applications. Read-write clusters declare publishing services, one for each cache and target cluster combination. The hub-spoke model of active-passive is a case where there's an active cluster and there are multiple passive sites. Active-active is where multiple clusters support and serve read-write applications. Basically it per permits overlapping writes against the same entry. Applications register a conflict resolver class which detects overlapping writes and provides an in-flight resolution. Conflict resolution really has three options. You either keep the source, keep the target, or merge the source and target entries. It works best when values being done represent some sort of aggregate of the stream of updates, such as a max function or a sum function of all the update activity. Active Active can support multiple activity in various clusters. Another case is the mutually exclusive update strategy. The idea, this is a bit of a hybrid. It's, it's, it's a mix between active-active and active-passive. The idea is multiple clusters can update the same cache, but what they do is enforce in the application logic mutual exclusion. So only particular entries within a cache are updated by a particular cluster. It's very easy to configure. You just need to enforce these rules at the application level. Centralized model, you have a hub cluster and one or more leaf clusters. Leaf publishes only to the hub, and the hub publishes to all leaves. A leaf only has to know about the hub. A hub sees all update activity across all clusters and routes them to the appropriate leaves. This works best when all leaves use the mutually exclusive update strategy. This is great for monitoring and accounting all update activity across various clusters. How does one enable push replication? Replication is enabled via coherence configuration files using declarative XML. You first need to declare a remote invocation service that maps to a remote cluster that is the target of replication. 
it will contain standard transport information such as IP address and port. At the target cluster, you need to declare a TCP extend proxy client with the same port. Finally, you need to embellish the cache mapping definition with replication information. This will declare the publishing service and bind it to the remote invocation service that you declared earlier. Conflict resolution is needed to be defined by an application when you have an active-active use case. Basically, application logic is used to resolve overlapping rights in different clusters. It basically executes in the destination cluster when publishing entries. Its purpose is to detect conflicts and determine the resolution for any particular conflict. You can either keep the source entry as it's coming across the wire, or you can throw it away and just retain the destination entry. Or you can take the source and destination, look at the values, and merge them into something that makes sense. A coherence publishing service has typically these following attributes. You need to name the remote invocation service, the name of the cache of the target cluster, the batch size, and that's basically the number of operations sent over in a single remote invocation call publishing delay, and that's the maximum time spent sleeping before a publishing service wakes up to see if there's something to replicate. And optionally, for the active-active case, the application needs to register a conflict resolver class. There are some new features for a summer 2010 release. First of all, configuration is completely declarative and transparent to the applications. Also, a messaging service used by replication is now pluggable. You can plug in your own third-party messaging service into the push replication provider. Push replication can also be configured to push updates to other services, such as file systems. Finally, published entries can be easily filtered and coalesced using a custom filter class written by the application or by using declarative condition expressions embedded in the declarative XML.